What's up, .NET developers? Have you been trying to debug something and it works on your machine, you deploy it, it's not quite working the way you want, and but you want to like get another set of eyes when you're going through the debugging process? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show this new feature in Visual Studio called Dev Tunnels, which allows you to share a debugging experience with somebody not next to you, right here on learning.net and C-sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of Learning C Sharp and .NET. Let's talk a little bit about debugging. And I think one of the things that I've always struggled with as a .NET developer is if I'm working through something and I, I, I'm maybe running into some issues I'm going through my debugging process and I need a second set of eyes to help me or a second set of eyes for somebody to test something that I'm working on, like a bug fix, right? Um, like traditionally in the past, like I've had to deploy to another environment or something like that. Um, have somebody test and maybe look at some of the logs or telemetry that's coming through. Not a really great experience for the developer. So in the past, I've used like tools like ngrok to be able to do things like opening up basically a, a, a URL or um, a location that's on my machine that's accessed from some accessed by somebody that's not on my machine. And I think that's really, really cool. I've used that a lot. I love ngrok. Now in Visual Studio, there is a feature called Dev Tunnels, which is a very similar experience to ngrok. It doesn't have obviously all of the rich um, features that ngrok has, but if I have uh, an, an application that I want folks to test, I can send them a URL and they can use it. And I think it's really, really cool. And I'd love to show you a little bit of what uh, this particular, um, what this is and how we can use it to be better .NET developers. So, but firstly, before I get started, um, let's take a look at, at this really quick. So I'm gonna hop over, share my screen. So this is a blog post from our friend Syed, and he kind of introduces dev tunnels in Visual Studio for ASP.NET Core projects. And, and basically what it does, it walks through kind of what the user experience is for building out um, applications and then exposing dev tunnels through them. And I highly recommend taking a look at this blog post. Um, I'll make sure there's to put a link in the, in the description for this post. Um, it shows you how to set up in Visual Studio, but let's actually just do it inside of Visual Studio. So while, let me minimize this. So I'm inside Visual Studio right now. I created a Blazor server application um, in .NET 8. So let me just open that up. As you can see here, .NET 8, nothing really exciting. So if I run this application and click the green arrow here, what this is going to do, if folks uh, might not remember, it spins up a Kestrel server. So as you can see here, but the big thing here is that there's a local host um, URL. Um, that's great because I can test it locally on my machine, but I can't test it outside of my machine. For, so for instance, if I want to share this URL, share uh, this debugging experience with somebody, maybe I want to test it on a phone, uh, maybe hook it up to some other service, test some web hooks, whatever, I can't do that here. But what I can actually do with uh, the new Visual Studio Dev Tunnels is um, I can actually set up an experience to be able to do that. And how I do that is I go to the same uh, place where I've gone in the past. I, I go to my uh, my run and I go here and I take a look at the, some of the options here. And as you can see, there's now this option for Dev Tunnels. So I can um, take a look at the Dev Tunnels window. I can uh, there's I can select a Dev Tunnel. I can create a new Dev Tunnel. I'm going to create a new dev tunnel. It spins up an experience to basically configure a new dev tunnel. And what's cool about dev tunnels is I can specify like what um, account that I want the dev tunnel to be saved as is GitHub or uses MSA accounts or work accounts. So I'm going to have it be my GitHub account and I'm going to give it a name. So dev tunnel. Um, did I spell tunnel right? Doesn't matter. And I can specify a tunnel type. So tunnel types are interesting because you can either have it be temporary or persistent. Temporary means that the URL will change every single time you run the application. Persistent means that it'll it'll be the same over the course of time. So let's just have it be temporary for now. And then this is the uh, next another cool thing. So you can configure the access of that dev tunnel. So for instance, if I'm testing an application, I don't want everybody on the internet to have access to that dev tunnel. Um, I can do that. So I can specify either private or, or organizational or public. Um, so let's just go with public for right now just because I'm testing this and I want to make sure that I can test it from anywhere. So I'm going to click OK. And then after that, it says a dev tunnel has been successfully created and is selected as the current dev tunnel. And then after that, I can just go back in, make sure that my dev tunnel is selected, as you can see here, and then just hit run. So when I click run, um, it's going to actually spin up. Um, it's so the same thing. It's going to configure Kestrel. It's going to do all those things. It's going to run it. But then I get this pop up in my browser that says you are about to connect to a developer tunnel. And that's the URL for it. So I click continue. 
And as you can see here, look, it's the same application. So as you can see here, I have a counter, I have all that cool stuff. The URL is very much a dev is is a external site. So like it has a dot MS URL to it. So that's really, really cool. So if I close this, Actually, before I close this, let's take a look here and go look at the output window. And in the output window, I knew I have a, uh, a new output for dev tunnels and I can take a look at the dev tunnels that I have here. So it looks at um, my dev. So it sees if I have dev tunnels that exist in my live account or my GitHub account, and then it specifies the mapping. So the local host uh, URL to that dev tunnel URL. So that's cool. So but this is still like a local developer experience, local debugging. So I can actually say take that URL. So let's actually open that back up. Let's go back to Visual Studio or to our browser and let's just go here. And then I'm going to hop open um, a VM that I have. So this is a VM that I have running on my machine. I don't have access to localhost here because localhost is of this particular machine. But if I go here and I specify, let me just copy the clipboard. Let me just take out the fetch data and then hit there. Look, same message as earlier. So I can hit continue and then look at that. So I am inside a VM on my machine and I'm accessing a, an external URL that has that experience. And I can even go one level up, right? So well, I can level up this experience. So I can open up, say, for instance, let's look at our fetch data applicate our fetch data um, razor class or so the fetch data endpoint for a particular application I could put a breakpoint there and then if I go back to the VM and I click on fetch data the breakpoint fires so really really cool so I can actually send that URL to someone say hey can you test this URL for me and then I get a in point Visual Studio experience to be able to debug that solution. So that's really, really awesome stuff. One other cool thing that I can do as well is I can actually look at the developer tunnels that I have in on my machine. So if I just stop this right here and I can go into that same drop down and go to dev tunnels. And then if I go to show dev tunnels window, it'll show me the dev tunnels that I have. And I can look at the tunnel URL. Um, I can I see what the tunnel type is, the access type, it's created, and then I can remove this, right? So if I remove this, it's going to delete this tunnel and then nobody will have access to it. So really, really cool stuff. And that's some of the cool things that are coming out in Visual Studio over the next few months as we get closer to .NET 8 and C Sharp 12. So please like, subscribe, follow, share these videos if you're liking the sort of stuff that you're seeing here. I'm going to be talking about the sort of stuff all the way up until .NET 8, which is in November of 2023. So that's it. Let me know how you like this stuff. And this is Isaac. Take care.